Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of Business Networking with Vikram Gundal on Thinkly Talks. I must begin by thanking all of you for being here every week, week after week, and, and you know, saying hello and asking the questions to all the experts who come in and you know give us uh, their knowledge, share their knowledge with us, and also share their thoughts. Sometimes those thoughts are very new and very revolutionary in nature. But you know, you've been a very patient audience. You've been good with your questions. And you know, your questions have really made you know these uh, interactions very, very interesting and you know insightful for me as well. So you know I have a similar expert with me today. You know, he is someone I've known very closely very recently, uh, you know, he is a very good friend and, you know, he is very good at what he does. You know, you've seen the introduction that I put out. So he is what we call as a brand strategist and a communications expert, Nikhil Kothare. Uh, just a quick introduction to Nikhil so that, you know, you have a better idea of whom we are talking to. So this is uh, bio data which he has shared with me and written by him. Uh, he says he is a motivated and result-oriented communications professional with over 25 years experience in creative communication domain. But, you know, if you take his wisdom together, I think it will be more than 250 years of wisdom stored in there. He, his experience spans creating brands and conceptualizing to writing copy and content for various target audiences and mediums. He is also a professor, Professor Nikhil, whose forte lies in business communication, branding, advertising, and copywriting. He is a voracious reader. He has a personal library of, hold your breath, over 2,500 books. He says, reading, writing is a passion I indulge in only for satisfaction. He is a strong player with ace leadership capabilities. His key to success is positive use of knowledge. He, over the period of time, he's worked on several monkey clients. He's worked on Tata Sky. He's worked with Mahindra Rise, Bear India, Hershey's, Mahindra and Mahindra, Tata Sky again, Viacom 18, Hard Rock Cafe. He is part of VNI International. He conducts advanced training modules on leadership skills, presentation skills, meeting skills, increasing business through referrals, and networking skills as a whole. He's been a, he's, uh, one of the lead trainers in the BNI system, and he takes care of the brand for BNI India. So anything about, about the BNI brand and you know our port of call is Nikhil Kothari. Welcome to the podcast, Nikhil. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you, Vipul, so much for having me over. And uh, lovely introduction, like always. You don't need to read from the resume anyways. You know more about me. Just like that. Yeah, but you know, I'll tell you honestly. Uh, you know, when I read your resume, I realized I know so little about you from our interaction. There's a lot more to your personality than I actually know. So, you know, well, over a period of time, we'll explore and some of it we'll explore. Right the part, the parts that are not mentioned, you already know. <laughs> we'll leave that for another discussion. So you know, uh, as you know, our uh, theme today is about nurturing brand. But you know, before we get to that topic, can you tell me how did you enter this field? I mean, that's something that's always interested me, and that's a standard question I ask all my guests. Then. How did you come into this field? Because most of the people who come in come into this podcast are people who you know who aren't traditionally from that you know their parents aren't from that field and so on so how did you come into this field and you know what brought you here uh, okay so if i have to start uh how i got into advertising in the first place so the first thing you need to know about me is that i'm an artist okay by you, you can say born artist in that category so the only thing I know very well since childhood is how to hold a pencil, how to hold a brush. So that's where I came. Uh, 
having uh, after that obviously uh, being an artist that was my body that was my liking inclination whatever uh, after my 10th standard i directly went into art college so that was the calling anyways so i got into art now initially i wanted to get into fine art so fine art is something which is like you know jada jada brush leke canvas paint karo so that was my liking that would have been my ideal choice uh, any day but then papa bola ki kya karega jholi latka ke ghumega tu so better to sit in the office and you know create something which is going to earn you money also so okay. that's how it, that's how i got pushed towards uh, applied art advertising and uh, that's what i studied i was i was uh, in a great college the best college in bombay which is ls raja um, back then ls raja school of art so or better known as bandra school of art also. so i graduated from there moved into uh, good agencies were one of the big ones uh, mid size ones uh, and then suddenly i realized that uh, this whole culture of late nights and overnights is not something that i want to do for the rest of my life you know wo 12 baje hi chamakta hai tara and then you get a get some bright spark that's not me i like my 9 to 5 kind of schedule i need to sleep at a decent hour i need to get up at a decent hour so that's me so from college from uh, school uh, being passionate about art to college taking up converting that passion to uh, commercial or rather you know profession and then moving on to what i did so far so been more of a passion journey i'm passionate about art i'm passionate about my subject i love it i love brand branding brands are not something which i am fascinated with we'll get to that later <laughs> but yeah i'm fascinated with branding not that okay great that's, that's me that's my journey in brand so uh, you also we we try and understand the distinction so you're not interested in brands so much but you're interested in branding so you know that would be something to very interesting to take you upon so you know uh, from what i read on your bio yeah, bio sheet you know you you did advertising at a time when you know it was very exciting to get into advertising you know the like 90s and the early 2000s was a great time to yes. you know be in advertising and we also read some of the names that you know you work with are very exciting brands themselves mahindra rai and tata sky and so so you know let's walk us through your advertising journey because let's try and understand you know what kind of branding have you done so that will kind of you know give us the idea of what kind of work you worked on in the past and obviously i'm sure that kind of reflected in what you do today yeah so uh for me so like you said you know the the old school or the old times the exciting times of branding or rather advertising also so i'm i'm very fortunate not from the current generation of so called advertisers or branding people i i come from a time when artwork used to be made by hand you know it's right. something you know and i know those yeah. were the times when there were no computers there were no fast deliveries artworks would take like days and it used there to be a, something called oh, bromides it remember yes bromides transparencies all those so yeah so i come from that era i i'm fortunate that i have seen that era and have transitioned into the computer age so my journey started from there so my uh, understanding or my passion is more with to do with hand work and that is linked to your brain so that's where i have come from i've seen a lot of transition over the years where computers have taken over now ai is also taking over uh when it comes to brands that i worked with i've seen them also evolve so traditionally some companies have been like the traditional indian mentality companies they have transitioned they have moved on to becoming international the the th- thought process has changed it's evolved it's evolved in a good way uh, hopefully they will continue evolving in that sense and the brand would take you know be more receptive towards a change also but i i think evolution has uh, taught us everything that we know about advertising as well so yeah branding itself has also evolved in that sense so there's a very interesting question here from aniket parawar i'll take it in- In this context, because that will kind of lead us to some of the other things that I want to ask you. So he's asking, can you explain the difference between brand building and brand nurturing? Oh. So, Professor Michael, over to you. Uh, yeah, you I, can I, explain short. In short, what it means. <laughs> in short, so, uh, 
uh, in short answers okay. you will get short understanding so if you really want to know, if you really want want me to tell you then i well, well, well you can you can give it the give it the way you want <laughs> so when we talk about brand building okay let's take it for for brand building so i would say brand building is all about something which is not existent or is in the nascent nascent stage and you build from ground up whereas brand nurturing is more about what you have grown keep it growing so that's nurturing so building is one thing you start something from scratch or it is something that you are rebranding or re uh, reinventing it's like replanting a seed the same plant but a different uh, you know a different plantation but uh, nurturing is about how you're growing it how you are helping it grow reap the benefits reap the fruit all that so there's the diff there's a different uh, approach to brand building when you're building a brand there is a different science required when it is nurturing it is different so simply put if i have to say okay you know what brand building is like uh, planting a tree so uske liye pani alag quantity mein lagega usko nutrients alag quantity mein lagte hain but when it comes to nurturing you need a whole different nutrient it's, it's not the same Actually, there's a whole different right. amount of water that you need to do, uh, give so that's the difference okay i hope i get that an answer your question in short we will we'll have more inputs from uh, nikhil as we go along i mean i'm sure there's a lot more that we can unpack here in just giving us like good brand you know in just showing us the small things and then you know and ask us to reveal the big thing okay great so uh, you know your role now has moved from advertising and you know branding as such to being brand strategists and advising so i mean can you explain to us a few things for us for common understanding you know i i really like the word mentoring better strategist uh, is somebody yeah, yeah strategist is somebody who put everything out on paper okay i do that everything has to be on paper advisors they just do advising so i believe there is more to that role being in business has taught me a lot uh, that you need to be understanding and, uh, and you need to get into the entrepreneur's mindset and where they are coming from so there is another side to that and that's about knowing understanding and learning what the entrepreneur's business is all about wo kaise function karta hai kaise karta hai kaam what is his daily routine how does he function now when i get into the mentoring role that's where the thinking actually starts and that's what fancies me so strategist से ज्यादा मेंटर अगर मैं बोलूं अपने आप को तो वो बहुत ज्यादा एप रहे तो माय फॉर मी ब्रांड ब्रांड मेंटरिंग इज मोर ऑफ अ कॉलिंग वेयर आई वर्क विद द ऑन्टरप्रेनर फ्रॉम द डे स्टार्ट और फ्रॉम वेयर एवर ही टेक्स मी ऑन बोर्ड एंड आई वर्क विद हिम ऑन अ स्ट्रेटजी रादर देन मी जस्ट वर्किंग अलोन इन माय रूम एंड यू नो ये लो भाई करो अभी दिस इज माय स्ट्रेटजी फॉर यू सो देयर देयर हैव टू बी दिस So you are more the you know speed rolled up kind of person than somebody who just you know sits in an ivory tower and gives gyan. Yeah. Is that, that the way? Who need work? The short okay. term, where we gyan and all that, all the, all those things yeah. work very yeah. well for a short duration, where you give gyan and I give you jargons. Oh, branding is this and that and that. But for long term, we need hold that. Yeah, I think I think the segment that you're looking for also kind of requires that. Right? I mean, you know, if you if you're working for large brands, you know, they already have systems in place. They already have, you know, the kind of wherewithal that is required to you know put into practice what uh, a brand strategist would give them. Uh, versus you know somebody like you who actually. Uh, Holds the hand of your client and say, "Look, okay, this is the way you nurture your brand." Uh, would that be the right way of describing your thing? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think that would be the right way. That that would be apt as well. Nurturing is what actually any brand strategist should be doing. Uh, I am no different. So I would say that I am a nurturer. I do look at not just the uh, image part of a company, but the actual growth part of a company. So nurturing is very. And here you are not agnostic. I mean, you are agnostic to any kind of uh, thing. I mean, it's not necessarily only advertising or only digital or you kind of uh, for you. All of them are equally uh, important tools to have. Right? Absolutely. I I think uh, for uh, any brand or any brand branding strategy or be it marketing strategy, uh, the the. core concept the core message is very important now how you deliver that message it can be any medium medium 
could be digital offline pr event whatever it takes so idea is bhai naam hona chahiye now if you have to do if you have to walk any path you have to walk the path and you have to get there so i i believe so it's not it's a whole package deal it's not a one off deal yeah great okay so there's a very interesting question from jenny matthew here the question is what are some misconceptions about brand nurturing that you have encountered some misconceptions about brand nurturing the misconception oh uh, uh okay the most funniest one uh, misconception about brand nurturing that uh, you so a client needs to restructure himself and uh start from scratch and do away with everything that has been done so far so that, that's one of the misconception that i've always heard that jo bhi ab tak kiya tha sab crap hai abhi naya kuch karna padega no that's that's something which is a complete mis diagnosis of uh, the requirement so it's it's like saying uh, you know abhi tak jitna bhi nurturing kiya tha ped ko kaato aur fir se hoga so that's one of the most hilarious things i hear you know i i in this context i have a you know different sort of a question for you uh how often do you recommend to a brand owner or a business owner about you know to re you know re audit or uh, you know re examine what they are doing about their brand i mean is there a process for it i mean you know this is something i have always wanted to know so if that's a secret you know i would like you to reveal the secret i mean how often do you reuse it what you're doing Uh, as a brand owner. Okay, as a brand owner. Okay. <clears throat> so, is uh, is your non-brand so, I mean, as a brand mentor? I mean, I'm sure that's your job to kind of uh, tell yes. them, okay, this is the right time to now let's reuse it what we're doing. So, like for example, financial consulting, you know, uh, people who help you invest, so they tell you to do it once a year, at least, or once in two years. If you're too busy, so you know, do you have some sort of a standard procedure for doing this or you know. i'm going to steal it from the financial advice okay so it it so ideally it should be done every two years every entrepreneur needs to sit back and say okay fine you know what i started this business with passion and uh, this is where i wanted to reach and if they focus on sales then they should focus on the brand image as well and then whether the strategy is working whether what they planned out uh, or set out to do is it working they, it needs to be um, counted for it should be accounted for and it should be seen whether whether what i did made any kind of uh, difference did it hit the nail did i achieve the why so all these things need to be done on a regular basis so ideally you can do it one once a year because brand building is a longer process it takes time unless yeah. you have a lot of money but it takes time usually so once in two years once uh, once every four years or three years or four years you should be revisiting your uh why or your brand strategy or whatever you've been nurturing and you've been building you, you need to see whether it, it really did it get you anything any kind of activity for that one. see even marketing for that for instance you take a uh, take a yearly call right you revisit yeah. your plan see whether there was any roi same needs to be done with your brand you know why is it so different why why should it be any different so once in two years is you know an average Yeah, time even even with things changing so fast with technology uh, coming in ai coming in and changing things uh, you know virtual reality and all of those things you know changing the way we experience brand or at least the front facing part of the brand you know that we experience uh, all of that is changing with time and you know in, in that context also do you recommend a similar time frame or i mean what is the what is your game plan when it comes to uh countering or you know working together with technology I mean, how do you how how do you look at this yeah uh, it's it's like this uh, everything every technology every medium that has been invented post 90s or you know the 2000s uh, how are we using it is it as a tool or as a thing tank If our thought starts to be, अच्छा ये technology है और इसको मुझे use करना ही है कैसे भी करके, because it is the latest thing, then you got it wrong. It's not going to work for you, no matter how good the technology. But if you see that okay, my business or my brand requires a certain kind of technological support and this is the latest thing that could help me 
achieve that target or achieve that objective then yes then the technology is worth it technology in itself is not uh, never bad right but usko istemal karne ke wale ke paas intelligence hai ke nahi wo zyada important hai so i think uh, ai is a brilliant thing but uske piche bhi agar intelligence ho to that will work better So, do you use AI tools in your business? I mean, in, 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 so not for my business. No, not for my business. See, if I have to use, yeah. I'll use the natural intelligence rather than artificial intelligence. But if the artificial intelligence is of use to my client or the his brand, then yeah, definitely I'll use. No two ways about. So every two, every media, even for that matter, even digital media, digital media is not necessarily uh, working for every business. It will work for some businesses. It might work for major of the businesses. But not for all. But if you say yeah. that oh, you have to do digital media, media or digital marketing simply because it is the in thing, then that's the wrong way to go about it, and that's stupid. Uh, in in this context of digital and in this context of you know AI dominated uh, discourse, if I may use the word, uh, how do you see you know the entire process of brand building or brand nurturing changing? And you know, I mean, uh, has have things remained? Some of the things that will remain the same. I mean, we obviously know a lot of things have changed, but what has remained the same in your know, view? And you know, what are the common things that you know from let's say the early two thousands to now? What is it that has remained common in in brand okay. building? In your, in your, I don't find anything common. I don't find anything uh, remaining the same. It has evolved. Down right to the thinking process itself. Uh, the approach has the. Uh, I I think when we talk about brand uh, building or brand nurturing, uh, the one thing that I always ask my clients is why? Why do you want to become a brand? Why do you want to reach wherever you want to reach? So, the why has changed over the years, and hence everything that is associated with branding, whether it is nurturing or it is building or whatever restructuring architecture. Everything has changed simply because the why keeps changing. So if I speak to a client who was there ten years back, and I speak to him today, the why has changed. Why? Why are? Why is the requirement for becoming a brand present? Do you want to become a brand in the first place? So that keeps changing, and as long as that why keeps changing, there is no fixed way of being for branding. It has to keep evolving. And as strategists, I mean, you are a strategist yourself, so I know how you also think. And you know it, and I know it that we need to keep evolving with whatever the why is. Yeah, but I think one thing that I mean, you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. One thing that has remained constant is the fact that you got to be authentic. And as a brand, you got to be authentic about uh, you know who you are, what you mean to your uh, customer. If I may use the word, and I'm using the word customer here for a, a large set of people, and. Uh, You no, know, I think, and you'll agree with me, and I know you do, that you know remaining authentic to your customer is is key to you know, brand building. I, I mean, do you think that has changed at all? I mean, uh, it do it just change. It's always good to have a counter. It's view. there. It's needed. Uh, see, you know it. I know it. It's uh, authenticity, being authentic, being ethical. All these things are needed for every brand to be uh, looked up to. But ultimately, क्या होता है? you the, the moment uh, an entrepreneur starts thinking about the bottom line and sales and uh, you know getting that uh, hitting that target ye yeah. thoda bahut nikle ho hi jata hai and then they, we are called in then to cover up the the problems okay so, so here that is normal normal so here i have a very interesting question from brian demello okay. since we are on the topic of authenticity i just thought i'll take this question from brian so he is Question is what strategies can brands use to stay authentic while nurturing their brand? First of all, you need to be sure that the company that you are working with, your client, is authentic. Are they really delivering that promise? No matter how much you frame up, you can come up with the best vision statement, mission statement, run a whole campaign, telling people how authentic the company is. But ultimately, if the company is not authentic. And they are you are just trying to cover up a lie. It's not going to blow up in your face. So you can use a lot of tools. You can use a lot of mediums. You can use an entire advertising campaign to deliver this message that how authentic the person, uh, the company is. All that is there, but होना चाहिए, actual होना चाहिए. We say that uh, in advertising, everything is an exaggerated lie. But then 
or exaggerated truth however you want to say it <laughs> the fact remains that uh, it has there has to be truth so, okay, so yeah there are tools there are many tools we can just go on and on about how to strategize around a messaging and putting it forward in the uh, front of the target audience and all that wo sab ho sakta hai there are many tools to do that so we are going to we are going to do that now nikhil because uh, there is another app that you were which is called professor nikhil so you know we'll ask professor nikhil for some of those tools that you teach in the class today so what is this thing about professor nikhil i mean i have, that is something i didn't know about you i must admit so uh. i didn't know you were professor nikhil so uh. can you just tell me this part of your personality what is it that you do uh you know in to be professor nikhil i it's just simple i mean there's no there's no uh, big secret about it or something is i just love teaching so i i just love to teach so if you have knowledge wo uh, agar uh, so I, you read my uh, key to success it's always knowledge so if you have knowledge and you don't have anybody to pass it on to it's waste so before i move on i need to pass on as much as i can so that's where the whole thing has come from and the best way to do that is teach and uh, students are the best i mean they are they it's like uh, you know that clay that you can mold and that feeling of molding and uh, creating something or uh, dry uh, you know just pointing them out to the right way it's fascinating and it, it it's exhilarating for me so that's the reason why i do it so I I teach three subjects, but uh, but I get full uh, satisfaction can, doing. If you can tell us a little more about what are the subjects you teach, and uh, so where do you teach them? Just yeah, I some of our uh, people from the community might want to join those institutes where you teach because they just want to hear you more. So I I do teach. Ah, uh, uh, so I teach. Uh, business communication that's one of the subjects that i love uh, the other one is of course branding and uh, the third one is very very dear to me which is copyright so copywriting for communication industry is what i teach so those are the three things that i teach and uh, i i teach it at different uh, levels different uh, standards and so that's how i do it. so uh, there's another aspect of you i mean there are so many aspects but one definite one aspect of you is the whole thing that you are a networker and that's why you are here I mean, you know more than uh, anything else no you are here I because you are a... I told you because you love me <laughs> that too but you know more importantly because this community and this uh, podcast is all about network so you know you been in dni now for several years you not only are a networker you also are part of the regional team where you You know, are a trainer. You've been supporting chapters before. You now teach a whole host of things as a trainer. So, can you tell me how? I mean, what is networking for you? How has it helped you? You know, walk us through your journey as a networker. So, I believe in the core philosophy of the organization. It's very simple and it's very beautiful. So, the more you want, the more you need to give. So, I believe that you, the, the more you give out, and uh, so in my case. i give out in the sense of knowledge i share the knowledge i share the experience so the more i do that the more i get in return and that's what i like about the platform and then that's the reason why i'm there on the regional team also uh, no denying people know you for what you do and there's a certain amount of image that gets created there's a certain amount of uh, respect also that you earn and that's very difficult so i like that I, i like doing that i like training over there also simply because it gives me uh, a, a chance to speak with people interact with people gain experience from them and then share it with the next batch so i love doing that so that's the reason why i'm on the regional team of course visibility doesn't hurt people know you so that's that's a good thing that's a good feeling and then you get to meet good people like me <laughs> oh yeah the added bonus and i mean and that's give us gain i mean i gain a friend like you by you know yeah but you know i think uh, on a more serious note i mean has it contributed to business because you know then the first question a lot of people who are interested in networking are all this is fine but will i get business and so, i so- Yeah, of course, of course it does. I'm I'm part of the organization for what twelve years now. I've been on the regional team for uh, close to about seven years, seven eight years now. So 
definitely if i'm if i'm there i'm not stupid to be there just because you know it satisfies my ego or something I'm there because it is benefiting you business wise also it's it's definitely there i'm i'm benefiting from that so you do get business uh, more than the uh, more than business you get experience you get uh, knowledge you get friends of course all of those things are there but yeah business does happen and that's very important i think it's it's very important otherwise it's just a social club and this is not a place to be a you know a time to be in a social for retirement ke baad bhi ho sakta so you know going ahead i mean how do you see uh, brands uh, evolving you been you been you been you already seen a lot of change over the last 25 years uh, but how do you see it going further because things are changing more rapidly today than let's say 25 years 25 years ago if you establish the brand you can be sure for the next 10 years you don't need to kind of uh, look at it uh, you know you probably established it well and then you know at least one generation will taken care of but today you know that's not the case you, know, you need to keep nurturing if i mean the word so how do you see the future of uh, brand nurturing it's good business for all of us but how do you see that up the uh unfortunately bearer of bad news but uh, the way i see it is till the time th- there needs to be a lot of education okay first of all uh, we need to educate the entrepreneurs we need to educate our clients as to what is the right way and what is not going to be beneficial unfortunately right now the way i see things the way i see brands the so called brands coming up and uh, dominating the scene or creating this kind of whole uh, image in the market it's very very superficial there's no substance to them uh, they uh, they might have some great looking brand identity they might be some great looking uh, one off ad uh, one off ideas but it's but uh, there is a sustainability problem i don't see them being sustainable most of like the earlier question that i i think ryan asked right about authenticity and being authentic right that's probably lacking right now most of the brands that are there in the market i don't know whether they'll be there in the person like uh forget 25 years even for 5 years so it's like i am there i'm you know you don't know whether they stick around and there's no dependability over it and that's so in, something that so that's in something this context in this context how do you you know how do we advise that practice uh, it's you know, useful be honest you need to they, they need, you, you you are the sounding board i mean come on you you are the sounding board you are the mirror you tell them boss you whatever you're doing is wrong you can't keep saying hanji hanji sir ji whatever you say sir ji you can't keep doing that and that's the problem see you ask me what the difference between 20 uh, years back and now i think we were more open and upfront to our clients saying that more boss you're wrong now the client is always right and that's stupid you need to tell them what you're going wrong just because the person is paying you you can't just bend over and that's exactly what is wrong and when you ask me about 25 years ke baad kya hone wala hai nurturing ke baad kya hone wala hai i don't know i probably be planting tree real trees there at that time not planning brand <laughs> this 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 is the one from the middle that i wanted to see the fire brand you know so far you are very very uh <laughs> <laughs> i was trying to be controlling <laughs> yeah i was trying so, to we would have to come up but you know i all of those serious was taking i mean uh, how do you manage to release so many roles one is of course uh You know your role in the A nine, all of that mm-hmm. you do there. You know your role as a brand nurturer. You know your role as a professor, and then you have these thousands of books that you read. I mean, how how do you find the time here? I mean, what is it that you do? I I honestly don't think uh, too much about it. I do what I want to do at that particular time. ये multitasking का जो word है is just a big word. It's just another word to use to prove to somebody that I can do so much. Just about showing off. वो मेरे से नहीं होता तो आई डोंट थिंक आई एम जगलिंग एनीथिंग आई एम जस्ट टेकिंग इट वन डे और वन आर एट अ टाइम सो राइट नाउ आई नीड टू डू समथिंग इन दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग आई एम देयर एंड आई डू दैट ओनली सो यू नो व्हाट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट व्हेन आई एम टॉकिंग व्हाट आई कांट डू मल्टीपल थिंग्स एट अ टाइम मेंटली एंड फिजिकली नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर मी सो आई डू द दोस थिंग्स ओनली वन थिंग एट अ टाइम फिनिश इट मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन सो एंड ऑफ कोर्स बुक रीडिंग व्हाई यू कैन टेल मी टू you know sit uh, stand in queue and i read i'm that kind of a person so book reading is not in any part of 
uh, or limitation as far as I'm concerned. I can be sitting in a lobby waiting for a client's meeting and I'll read. So, so do you have a book with you all the time? Do you, do you carry a book with you all the time? Oh, yes. yes. I always have a book with you. Or two. Depends. My mood is on. And I always carry two different genres. So one has to be something to lighten my mood and one has to make me think. Wait, second, thanks a lot for your time. I know you keep a very, very busy schedule. I know you made it sound one of the biggest people. But I know that, you know, you really made the time for this. So, uh, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you, know, you taking the time to come over and answering all our questions patiently. And for the best extent you can without losing your food. So, that was the good part. So, I'll try like to blow up your bit, but you didn't get to blow up. It was full of speed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening.